So, after my Naruto video, I actually got a request from someone wanting me to cover Spiral Energy from Gruen Lagan. Having left his homeland, he never yields, never retreats, and never regrets! He faces forward, and never looks back! He's manly! He's tenacious! Let's talk about the basics of Spiral Energy. So, what is Spiral Energy? Uh, to put it in the simplest terms possible, Spiral Energy is the power of evolution. It is the force underpinning everything in the universe. Right down from the spinning of atoms, all the way up to the spiraling of galaxies, and everything in between. It seems that even the fabric of space-time itself is dependent on the concept of spiral energy. Spiral energy is not only the force that allows these things to exist, but is also the power that amplifies it all. Living organisms with a helical pattern in their DNA also possess spiral energy, and as such are referred to as spiral beings or spiral races. But this spiral energy affects the spiral races in a very, very special way. For starters, it not only gives them the power to evolve and grow on the biological level, but also on the personal level as well. And as such, they have a special name that they know spiral energy as. Fighting Spirit. To them, it's more than just the pattern of their DNA or the ability to evolve. It's the power that allows them to keep fighting and grow strong to defeat any obstacle that comes in their way. As a result of that, they possess the spiral instinct the force within their very DNA that compels them to move forward towards the heaven. Those with the greatest instinct and the greatest fighting spirit tend to have the greatest spiral energy. Now all of that is in no uncertain terms ambiguous. So let's talk about what spiral energy can actually be used for by the spiral beings that possess it. Quite frankly there are a lot of things and spiral energy can allegedly do just about anything. But that does not make for satisfying content. In theory I could just turn the video off right now and I think that would be perfectly valid. But I'd like to be a lot more specific on what Spiral Energy can do, how it does it, and who can do it with Spiral Energy and why. Unfortunately, some of this information the series is not exactly forthcoming with, and it's left a little bit ambiguous. So I'm just going to cover as much as possible while trying to avoid speculation as much as possible. In before, this video will be covering things from the anime only. Not the movies, uh, not any spinoffs, not the manga, because the anime came first and is therefore the primary material. I am almost 100% positive that something is either going to get retconned or changed in the manga, and the moment I post this, someone's going to hop in the comments and argue with me about what the manga says, even though the manga is not the primary source of material in this case. Please refrain from being that person that does not help anybody. The best way to approach this is to organically look at how spiral energy is used in the series. For starters, we know it's an innate source of energy that characters have, but what becomes immediately apparent is the vast majority of characters have no ability to harness and utilize spiral energy on their own, except for just their typical natural behaviors and instincts. You know, characters aren't like shooting massive key blasts or doing kamehamehas or flying or anything like that. Although theoretically, if they got strong enough, they absolutely could. The main way that most people utilize their spiral energy is through gunmen. Gunmen are these giant mechas that are far stronger than the typical human being. While gunmen have the ability to operate on normal electricity, it seems that spiral energy itself is much stronger and is their primary source of energy that they use to do combat. But it seems just a baseline level of spiral energy is not enough to operate a gunman. If a person steps into one and is lacking enough fighting spirit to turn it on, then nothing will happen. It fuels their movement, it fuels their attacks, their energy beams, missiles, etc. Just about all of these things are directly powered by spiral energy. Now the implication of this would be the fact that a person with stronger spiral power, whenever they're piloting a mech, regardless of which one it is, uh, would actually would actually be way stronger than a person with less spiral power. They could be operating the exact same mech and the person with spiral power should in theory be better. And this is something we kind of see in the series, but to be honest the degree of exactly how much is debatable. For example, the only times we really get to see this are with uh, Lord Genome, who we know is very very powerful, meaning it's difficult to say exactly how much the mech is being amplified by his power when he's capable of doing even better without it. On the other hand, we also have Simon, but but throughout the entire series, Simone is kind of like his oddball exception. The ability to inflate things with spiral power seems to be seems to be either innate to him or the mech he pilots specifically, which is Logon. And the fact that these two exclusively come together makes a lot of this analysis even more complicated. Some might argue that the reason that Kamina is so successful in his mech is because he has so much spiral power. But aside from the fact that he has plot armor and he's a main character, uh, there's no real proof that his mech is innately stronger than anyone else's, even though it might be. 
Then again, just about any situation that Kamina survives or succeeds in is almost directly due to the interference of Simon. It seems that Simon is his plot armor, that every time Kamina succeeds, it's because Simon jumped in and did something. And a lot of the occasions where Kamina is able to defeat someone in a fight, it's because Simon is also there. Or because he combines into Guru and Lagon, which seems to be predominantly fueled by Simon. Although we later learn that it can also be fueled by whoever's in the other cockpit. Which in this case still makes it very difficult to determine exactly how much of an amp he's putting forth. This information would also seem to suggest that human beings piloting gunmen are innately stronger than beastmen piloting gunmen. We learn later that because beastmen are, were intentionally created to suppress human beings and limit the amount of spiral energy in the universe, they actually themselves do not possess spiral energy. We also later learn that gunmen can be piloted with raw electricity instead, even though common sense would dictate this would be weaker. Having said that, once we see human beings piloting gunmen with electricity, there's no direct proof that those gunmen are any weaker without it. However, when it comes to those gunmen being piloted by beastmen, it's difficult for me to say if the beastmen are innately weaker in their gunmen, or if the characters just have plot armor which admittedly seems to be the case. Now the weird thing about this going forward is that 99.999% of characters pretty much only use spiral energy in this way to pilot these gunmen. This makes talking about the topic a little bit difficult because everything else going forward is going to be somewhat of an exception. Things that are technically possible, but we don't know how common they should be because we only see one or two characters doing them or only in specific circumstances. Now the first exception I want to talk about is enhancing a person's body. While again, 99% of the characters in the story are basically just normal humans even when they're harnessing their spiral power, there exists one or two exceptions where human beings are innately more powerful, durable, faster, stronger. We first see this with the Spiral King Lord Geno. And his fight scene against Gurren Lagon, after Lagon tries to take over his mech, it seems they're stalemated for a brief moment. At which point he gets annoyed, realizing that he shouldn't have relied on his mech Lazengon to do all the work. In which case he literally steps out of the mech, walks down the side of the mech, and proceeds to lay the smack down on Lagon. From this point forward, he just starts smacking it around with his bare hands. My guy has so much energy that not only is he strong enough and fast enough to compete with a mech, but he literally has all this energy flaring out of his body. This is the most absolute and undisputable example of spiral energy giving a person physical power. But there might be some other examples if the wiki and some of the fans are to be believed. Now I don't know exactly how much sense this makes or if it's true or not, but a lot of people seem to believe that Simon has his body and physique enhanced by spiral energy. Aside from Lord Genome, he's one of the only real examples of people harnessing spiral energy to a significant degree. And even though we have absolutely no proof of him having any form of melee combat training, he seems to be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe physically, unarmed, with well-trained beastmen in his adult form. So depending on how you look at it, this could either just be anime shenanigans, where the character is just surviving longer than he's supposed to just because, which we actually saw with his big bro Kamina way earlier in the series, as he was fighting that exact same character. He miraculously seems to survive when in all honesty he probably should have been cut down with no issue. It could be that, or it could very well be that his spiral power has just made him that much stronger. Honestly, I don't know, and I'm gonna leave this up in the air. Another thing that spiral energy can do is create and enhance matter. And in some extreme cases, this power can even be used to restore machinery that's damaged, although that's most likely a logon specific ability. So oftentimes when Simon is fighting, what he'll end up doing is charging up spiral energy, and using it to manifest drills. For the longest time in the story, I didn't know if the ability to create drills was something innate to himself, innate to the mech he was piloting named Logon, or if it was just a basic facet of a spiral energy. Now here's the neat part. There's one tiny scene where Lord Genome, uh, before we ever see him don a mech, uses his spiral energy to create a tiny drill as an example of what spiral energy is capable of. But beyond this one scene as a demonstration to Viral, we never actually get any real examples of him using spiral energy to manifest anything outside of the stuff from his mech. To make matters worse, even long after Simon has eclipsed Lord Genome in strength, he still never actually manages to do a similar thing with his powers. He never manifests anything with spiral energy, at least not on his own. Now, while some people might try to argue that Simon just hasn't acquired or learned this ability, that doesn't seem to be how spiral energy works. 
as you'll see throughout the entirety of the series and the rest of my analysis here. I have a number of complaints centered around that fact exactly. To argue that he has to acquire this ability or to learn it is a complete contradiction to the way the series has worked thus far. So that can't be used as an argument. And some might try to use the very last fight as sort of an argument to explain what things are possible with spiral energy, but I'd also like to remind you all that all of that stuff happened inside of a super spiral universe. And, according to Lord Genome, thought is given form there, implying that this is something abnormal or unnatural even by the means of typical spiral energy use. Meaning that everything that happens in that realm is an exception, and not something that you can expect to happen under normal circumstances. Even though the series kinda has difficulty proving that at some points. In other words, if you think this doesn't make sense, don't blame me, blame the writers. They made it up. So while it is canonically possible, quite frankly, there's just no tangible usage of this ability. This is one of those situations where people will probably bring up the movies to argue with me. Because in Lagan Hin, in the very last scene of the fight at the end, Simo manages to manifest the drill out of his blood. Which seems like it might be a related power. Having said that, this does produce a bit of an issue. This is one of those classic examples of why I don't tend to use supplementary material. Because oftentimes they'll change things and sometimes they're far more concerned with spectacle uh, than they are with consistency. However, because people like the movie, people are going to be arguing with me that it should count kind of just because. To make matters worse, the wiki page describes things that actually don't even happen in the anime canon in the first place. And sometimes, it doesn't make any distinction at all on whether or not it was from the original anime canon or the movies or something else. Now as for the ability to create materials, I'm beginning to think that that's a power specific to logon type mechs. And the reason I believe that is, the only other example of people we see making actual material out of a super spiral universe is Lord Genome with his mech Lazingon. In and before their fight, it's not only implied but also directly shown somewhat that Lazingon is actually a Logon type mech. Now there's basically like one other occurrence where a character who doesn't have a Logon was either enhancing or materializing drills. And that was Keaton when he was in the Spiral Graveyard. But the key exception here to recognize is the fact that the drill he was using wasn't one he made himself. It was a drill that he brought with him as a good luck charm that actually came from Gurren Lagon. And once he attaches that drill to his mech, not only is he overcome with spiral power, as we can see because his eyes change, but the drill fuses to his machine, as well as becoming bigger as it inflates with spiral energy, which is a trademark quality of Gurren Lagon. It almost seems to be that Gurren Lagon's power is just rubbing off on Keaton as he's using this ability. There is a point when a person who's very strong in spiral power either has such a connection with something in the universe that's not nearby, or is focused so much on that thing, they can literally teleport to where that thing is. But in any case, this power can literally be so strong that instead of just teleporting around the universe, it can literally rip open portals to other dimensions and universes. And it can literally open up a portal to spaces in between universes. However, this power can actually be interfered with or disrupted, even though the requirements of doing so are quite ambiguous. Spiral energy can also be stored by living beings. It doesn't even have to be their own spiral energy. It can also be spiral energy from something that has immense energy around them. And as that energy is put off, I guess they just absorb some of it over time and keep track of it. In which case, that being can output that energy as if it was its own. But the only circumstances I can recall that ever happening in uh, were circumstances where that creature was just in contact with a very powerful spiral being for a very, very long time. Another thing that I thought was pretty interesting was something that this same creature does later. There is a point near the end of the series where all of the main characters are trapped in an, in an infinitely splitting maze of universes and timelines that are being created in the very moment that they are perceived. And the reason stated that they are able to be caught in this thing is actually because of their intelligence. Because they evolved to such a point where they are intelligent enough to perceive those realities, their minds are simply trapped there and they can't get out. This actually didn't apply to the mole bore thing because it actually wasn't advanced enough or intelligent enough to perceive those realities. However, when their enemy, the anti-spiral, actually arrives inside the ship, in order to protect the others, the, bo the mole jumps out to attack and in doing so, he harnesses the power of Lord Genome's spiral energy, and as a result, he's able to use that energy to force himself to evolve into a humanoid form. It's actually revealed when Gurren Lagann combines with Dai Gurren that spiral energy is used most efficiently and at its greatest 
when the being using it is in humanoid form. Meaning that there's something innately special about the humanoid form that is attached to spiral energy. But anyway, it's explained that personal growth power can somehow be harnessed uh, and channeled directly into evolutionary power instead. Suggesting that these are two different fronts that spiral energy affects. Though it is also stated that this should typically be impossible. So not only can spiral power be harnessed to improve the growth or the willpower of an individual person, it can also be used to evolve a species. Which is an interesting touch that makes perfect sense with how spiral energy is uh, explained throughout the series. However, it is worth noting that a little bit after this scene, the boar mole thing does return to normal. And for the rest of the story, he is a normal animal. But it is possible that the act of taking personal growth energy and turning it into evolutionary energy uh, is somehow innately a temporary thing. But anything past this point is completely speculation. On this next portion, I simply don't have very much to say other than the fact that it exists and it is possible. Probability manipulation is a thing. It seems to be pretty strong too. And it seems that you can amplify a probability almost or about to 100% and even the opposite changing a probability to just about zero. This is something that the characters discover actually exists near the end of the series. However, in the final fight, without having any time to figure out how to use this ability, we already have a character, a completely C-list character that usually isn't relevant, who conveniently knows how to do it now. Now to be fair, it is a canon thing that people instinctively sort of know how to, how to pilot mechs. However, in this case, with something that adept, something that they just learned existed. I feel like using that argument in this circumstance is sort of like a cheap excuse. So I mentioned that maze of timelines and universes a little while back, so let's talk about that. Ultimately, it's a pretty cool concept. The idea that these universes are constantly splitting off and that the characters are stuck for being forced to perceive them as time goes on and their inability to escape, all that stuff is cool. I'm cool with that. It's a nice idea. What I don't get is exactly how everyone got out. Basically, we get a clip of all these characters being stuck in their separate alternate timelines where different things are happening, where they're either successful or not or whatever. They're just alternate timelines that have something different from the world that we know now as the primary timeline. The problem comes in in the fact that in every single one of these scenes, that in every single one of these timelines, every character is bailed out by Kamina. Not the Kamina that exists in that timeline, as we see with Simon. The original form of Kamina just appears because he just does. And then he bails all these characters out of their illusion. To make matters worse, something about the way he bails everyone out of their illusions conveniently summons a core drill which admittedly I should have brought up earlier. But to put it simply, a core drill is a special key that's shaped like a drill that is able to harness the power of spiral energy in a way that it seems is otherwise impossible. The core drill is the thing that's required to pilot a logon. Without having a core drill inserted, you can't use one, and it doesn't build up spiral energy from a user without one. However, it looks like we can also use the core drill in other ways, because in Simon's fight with a spiral king, he actually takes out his core drill, and then he uses it and stabs Lord Janum with it to focus all of his spiral power into him. And in doing so, he blows a hole in his torso. Meaning that in theory, it could also be used as a weapon or a wand or something like that. But that's all besides the point that I'm making here. But anyway, we already know that Simon has his own core drill. But the strange thing about this is that when every character is bailed out by Kamina, they all miraculously manifest their own core drill. And then, after being booted out of that timeline, they appear in the normal world. They appear not only with their own core drill, but also with their own logons as well. And yes, these are probably logons. If not, they're probably just core drills. We did see a similar thing with Lord Genome earlier, but once they leave the Super Spiral Universe, we do see that they all are currently in their own logon. Now this almost makes sense. We know that before they got put into that maze of timeline, they were in the wreckage of the Spiral Graveyard. And the Spiral Graveyard had a number of logon in it, and it's safe to assume that those logons mostly probably had their core drills inside of them, which is fine. But how do we translate from our consciousness being stuck in this infinitely splitting timeline thing into not only manifesting your own core drill out of nowhere, but also being just, just appearing inside your own logon? I know that they could have just recovered those logons and then found the core drills inside of them and then used those, but that's not what happened. We go from all the characters being in the ship or wherever they were, having their consciousness being stuck in these timelines while everyone's physically standing there. And then, and then everyone teleports out. And then everyone just gets their core drills and appears with them in their own logons out of nowhere. 
I mean, I guess we can assume there was a jump cut, but... Also, don't let this distract you from the fact that Viral is using one without spiral energy somehow. I mean, yeah, normal gunmen can run on electricity, but like, should a logon even be able to do that? Because all of its main features don't work without spiral power anyway. But in any case... All of that is neither here nor there. My real question is, exactly how does Kamina bail them out? And this is a perfect example of a lot of the flaws that exist in this magic system. I mean, not a lot of the flaws, but the one flaw. This system only has two flaws. One, some of the details on who can do what and how are ambiguous, which, which is expected in a soft magic magic system, but sometimes they kind of push it here, because we don't know if the powers are based off of logons or if they're based off of the people. The second issue is the fact that it's a willpower-based magic system. Now, what's the problem with that? The problem with will-based magic systems is simply this. The problem is writers use willpower or any willpower-based magic system as a get-out-of-jail-free card. The idea that no matter what's going on, they're not responsible for making a cohesive magic system or making a cohesive plot. That having an overwhelming amount of willpower can just yeet any obstacle out of the way. This deflates the stakes. Yes, it can look cool and awesome, but at some point a lot of viewers are just going to get jaded. They don't really care because they know that you're going to inflate people's power levels in the moment uh, based off of their willpower. Which is, by the way, in case you were wondering, almost the sole way that any problem gets solved in this entire anime. Don't believe me? Well, what the hell? It fixed itself! Fight experiment! <laughs> the anime isn't bad or anything, but every time anything happens, it's willpower, willpower, willpower. Another problem with these types of magic systems is that instead of being based off of a person's willpower in general, they're just conveniently based off of the emotions or the hype of the moment. So instead of people having consistent power levels based off their willpower, their willpower will just inflate out of nowhere because the situation is innately dramatic. And for some reason, it's only main characters that do this and not villains or something usually. Because goodness knows that would put a monkey wrench in the writer's plans. And that's how every single problem is solved in the series. A dramatic hype moment flares a character's willpower, even when that character historically has very little, and maybe we discover a new power, and then he just has that power now. There's no real criteria for awakening some of these abilities, they just happen. Which honestly really takes a lot of the enjoyment out of the series for me. At least other series will pretend to make some form of sense or cohesion when they start throwing these powers in here. And a lot of viewers will argue that somehow the hype seems to justify this problem, when in my mind it doesn't. There are plenty of anime or TV shows or movies or whatever that have hype moments where, where the hype is through the roof without having to sacrifice the logic of the series. You can take those things hand in hand, and the idea of arguing that either you can't or that having hype somehow excuses you from making sense is just the mark of a terrible writer. And it's also the mark of sensitive fans who can't hold their writers accountable. If you believe in something and you think it's good, it's okay to think that it can be better too. It's not mutually exclusive. Uh, so apparently Logon can just absorb energy. Uh, we find that out when Simon is fighting Mugons and they shoot a blast of energy at him and for some reason his drill absorbs it. Don't really know why that is. Some people might argue it's because the Mugons are unstable in their makeup and that's why that happened. But remember, he's not absorbing the Mugons, he's just absorbing the energy. So apparently this is just something he can do. Another time where this happened is in the Super Spiral Universe. I'm getting tired of saying that word. Lord Genome got hit with a massive blast of spiral energy. And apparently it was so strong that he deconstructed on a quantum level and became one with the energy. And he immediately feeds himself to Simon to add his reserves of power to his own. So yeah, apparently that's a thing we can do. And I guess that means you can fuse too? I don't really know, I'm tired. Now this last thing is one of the things I really didn't want to talk about, but I feel like a lot of people were going to hold it against me if I didn't say anything. For some reason, a lot of people believe that Simone is either literally omnipotent or is capable of reviving people from the dead for some reason or another. Despite the fact that people believe this, and despite the fact that the wiki literally says this is the case, there is exactly zero proof to suggest that this is a thing he can do, or to suggest that it is even possible for him to do. The best we get is a statement from Gimme, or rather a question, asking Simon why he doesn't revive his recently deceased wife. 
He says, why don't you just use your spiral power and revive her? As if that's something he's seen before. Now mind you, Gimme is one of the characters who knows the least about spiral energy. He's barely ever seen it in action, and at best he only learned of its existence either a couple of weeks to a month ago. This man is clearly talking out of his neck. His words have no meaning or substance, they're just something that was thrown in. And Simone responds with more or less a non sequitur. There's really nothing valid in this statement to suggest that this possibility is relevant. And while we're on the subject, they'll also use similar statements and the same scene to suggest that Simone is omnipotent? Why? How? Where? Zero proof to suggest this. And the feeble argument that spiral energy can do anything doesn't matter, because there are plenty of people in the story at that point, even in that same fight, that were using spiral energy, including his enemy. Are you going to argue he's omnipotent too? Can't do that. That's not how it works. But anyway, I think that covers just about everything important. There are a couple of tiny things I missed here and there, but ultimately I don't think they're all that big of a deal. And yes, I'm aware I didn't talk about the spiral nemesis, I'll talk about that in just a second. So without further ado, let's talk about its magic system score. Now with everything I brought up here, spiral energy is sort of in a weird circumstance, along with a lot of other magic systems that I've told you about. The idea of them isn't bad, and not everything that they do and execute in their story is inherently bad either, but it has certain key things that end up becoming an issue as time goes on. Luckily this is no Naruto, so it hopefully shouldn't even be that bad. Just to recap my bare bones criteria for grading magic systems, we have cohesion, governance, and limitation. Cohesion is the overall cohesiveness of the magic system itself. All of the rules that are supposed and put forth, are they consistent with each other, are they clear, or are they ambiguous? And do any of the rules contradict themselves? Governance. Rules can be as consistent and cohesive as they want to be, but if they're not actually being applied to the series, then they're absolutely useless. A series with good governance will have countless examples of all of the series rules that, by the way, don't contradict one another, being actually applied in the series in a ways that don't contradict anything. And then lastly, we have limitation, or to be more specific, limitations that facilitate the conflict and resolution of conflict in the story. The act of having very few limits is not innately a problem, and the act of having a lot of limits is not innately a problem. The question is, how well do they serve the story in producing and resolving conflict? Not can people solve problems, or does it stop people from solving problems, but how well do those limitations affect the nuance of the story? So let's start with cohesion. I did complain a number of times throughout this video uh, that I had an issue figuring out whether or not something was possible with a mech, without a mech, or if it was ability specifically limited to log on. And this is something that doesn't disappear throughout the series. Because just about every spectacular thing that we see has something to do with either Simone's log on or someone else's log on even though some of these things are never stated to be attached to log on. Now I know everything I just said was a mouthful, but ultimately that leaves me kind of scratching my head. It's not that the rules are inconsistent with themselves, but there are basic facets of the magic system that if we just knew a smidget more information, it would all make more sense. And then we have the presence of things like making drills that are kind of explained, but then we have things like the super spiral universe, what it means, what it does, how we even get one, what it takes to teleport other than just being really strong, forcing oneself to evolve, escaping an infinite branching out of universes. These are all things the characters can do, and we don't know how they're doing them. But considering the fact that anything it takes to perform these functions are completely missing from our understanding, they kind of just seem to do them. We have a lot of gaps and a lot of things to be desired in terms of the baseline level of explanation we should expect from this magic system. The neat fact is, even a lot of soft magic writers tend to have the sense to give the viewer certain information when it's necessary. Even things like Harry Potter or Doctor Strange are willing to give viewers information about how a problem is being solved with magic or what it takes to get that thing to work if it's necessary. And that's all part of the concept of setup and payoff, which I shouldn't have to remind you is a basic facet of writing. To give you an idea of just how bad this is, we actually know more about the basics of how magic works in Harry Potter and how spells are cast than we do about how the magic in Gurren Lagan works. Which is crazy because Harry Potter is known far and wide for how inconsistent and ambiguous it is. The competition in this case wasn't all that high. Even so much as adding a little bit more detail or, or even explaining that all of these mechas have these programmed in before they even knew about them. Now all of those things could help explain how, how half of this stuff works. Whereas instead a lot of characters just 
get hyped up, have a lot of energy to do something, and then do it, sometimes before they even know it's actually possible. So ultimately, while there are no major inconsistencies, because of the ambiguity of basic information like this, I'm going to have to give the series a cohesion score of, honestly, I want to say 6, but I guess I'll have to be nice and give it a 6.5. On for the second score, governance. We know the magic system has rules, but does the magic system use those rules? In a perfect world, this would always be a perfect 10. And, it looks like today we've gotten one step closer to perfection. I don't really see any examples of the magic system being particularly inconsistent. I mean, I could be forgetting something, but let's be honest, the magic system barely has any rules anyway. On second thought, there is one very small thing. I mentioned a little while ago that there was no direct proof that a typical gunman piloted by a human is innately that much stronger than a typical gunman piloted by a beast man, which doesn't actually have spiral energy. It would therefore just be using electricity in its gunman, and for all intents and purposes, we have no reason to not believe that electricity would just be weaker. But I did mention earlier in the video that even when characters were using electricity to fight in the spiral graveyard, there was no real or direct proof that they were that much weaker, or if they were weaker at all. They just kept fighting like normal. And even though Lord Genome states himself that there's no real way that a beast man could ever hope to match a human being that has acquired the power of spiral energy. We only ever really see any beastmen that are worth their weight in skill when Simone is in the picture, in which case he's using Gurren Lagann, which is clearly one of the more powerful mechs. Not to mention the fact that he has some of the most spiral power out of anybody in the entire series. So the idea of them not being able to beat him is a given. But what about the typical person? Unfortunately, we don't have any proof. We don't have any proof that human beings under normal circumstances are that much stronger. And don't get me wrong, I know that during the rebellion, there were more people fighting gunmen than just his team. But we saw a number of times that a lot of those gunmen were getting either ambushed or jumped. And it's not hard for me to believe that they could have been overcome with guerrilla tactics if they were careless. For all we know, that could just be plot armor. The writer doesn't do a good job of showing us the difference. And goodness knows some of these characters have plot armor. This is all also not to mention the fact that we basically never ever see the hunger limitation come into effect ever again, although it's brought up maybe once or twice. This typically wouldn't be an issue assuming that everyone was well fed at all times. However, it's not as if you have to be facing some level of starvation in order for this rule to come into effect. Back in the episode where it's first supposed, the reason I thought of it like a joke was not because it was funny, but because of how quickly and how glibly the story flew the limitation into place just to make a temporary conflict. It wasn't as if these characters were just not eating for abundantly long periods of time. They just didn't get a chance to eat yet. Meaning that this limitation is probably something that would realistically be common enough that in all honesty, if I was piloting a gunman, I'd probably face this at least once every other day. To make matters worse, we never ever really see anything but any but two gunmen stop working when a person doesn't have fighting spirit. The first one was Simon, because he was panicking when he was a kid when he first started piling his gunmen. And then the other was Kamina, which while he was definitely in a new situation he'd never been in before, the idea that he of all people conveniently didn't have the willpower to fight when he first jumped in a gunman is absolutely absurd because he, at least from what the characters are saying, has the most of that compared to everyone else in the entire series. Not another single character jumps in a gunman and has any kind of delay. Even Simon didn't have a delay when he first hopped in his gunman, suggesting that in that moment Kamina was lacking something that, in all honesty, completely goes against his character. I feel like the writers were trying to make an example of, you know, how serious the situation was or whatever, or how, how, how high the stakes were, to make it look as if he has even more willpower, but in reality, they just contradicted his character. Then we have the fact that gunmen can be piloted with electricity anyway, not to mention that that's probably an automatic setting, seeing as no beastmen are actually able to use spiral energy, meaning that all gunmen who are ripped from the hands of beastmen would automatically have that setting on in the first place, if it's something you even have to bother turning on. These are things that are blatantly ignored right when the writer doesn't care, and only end up becoming relevant later down the line just to save the character's skin. So ultimately, I'm going to have to drop the score down to 7. As I speak, I can slightly feel myself becoming less popular. And lastly, we have the limitation category. Does the limitations in the magic system facilitate conflict and the resolution of conflict? Oh boy, here we go. Now the first two scores here weren't that bad. 
this one hurts my soul. A lot of people are going to be upset with me because I give them such a low score here. And this is something I was very concerned with from the moment I realized that Spiral Energy was based off of Fighting Spirit. Willpower Magic Systems are almost up there with the power of friendship. They're never really worried about making sense. They're worried about blowing everything up with drama so a character can get absurdly powerful out of nowhere. All the powers these characters possess are based off of this willpower. We don't really understand much of any of it other than the fact that these things are possible. That, that characters are capable of doing them. And so they kind of just do. Even when characters are disrupted or stopped from doing something. For example, when the anti-spiral stopped Simon from warping towards where his wife was. It got disrupted somehow. I don't really know how. He just did it. To make matters worse, the biggest risk in the entire series of everything collapsing and destroying the universe as one we get waved over our head but we never really physically get to see or see the characters actually genuinely grapple with, making it almost completely irrelevant aside from spectacle. However, it's not all bad. In the beginning, we see the first two limitations of spiral energy, being that you have to actually have fighting spirit and, and that you have to be properly fed in order for it to work in the first place. Now, I wish that second one was used a little bit more. As for the limitation of having to have fighting spirit, this is this magic system's only saving grace. Even though it's barely ever used as a limitation at all, later in the series and often ends up turning into a crutch, it is utilized a number of times and it ends up being one of the main conflicts that Simon has to grapple with throughout the story. However, it's worth noting that those two limitations are just for having Spiral Energy itself and not for all the different quirks and powers that Spiral Energy possess. And ultimately, by the time we get to the halfway mark of the series, it barely ever matters anyway having almost no impact on the series most of the time. Everything from that point on is either some kind of get out of jail free card or some massive soft magic spectacle. I really hate to say it. People are gonna be upset with me about this. I'm gonna give it a three and a half. Honestly, I wanna give it a three, but since the limitations were used at least somewhat decently early on, I can sort of give them a pass. And so with that, we have our total magic system score. After dividing, we have a grand total of five and two thirds. It's not the worst magic system, not by a long shot, but because of its lack of nuance and willingness to use ambiguous details and get out of jail free cards, it simply isn't the best. It doesn't have to be for you to enjoy it. However, it would be better if it had a better magic system. In any case, this is Isaiah from Magic System Monday. I thank you all for watching and until next time, never forget, Remember, the magic of Christmas lies in you.